Hey church, today we are going to talk about the blessing of mothers as well as the nurturing nature of God. And right now with everything going on in our world, we are consistently needing the tender, loving nurture of our God. And Psalms uh, 91 speaks to the nurturing nature of God in a beautiful way. And I want to read some of those verses to you. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in your shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God. I trust in him. He will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every deadly disease. Feels like that was written for today, right? He will cover me with his feathers. He will shelter me with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and your protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors that fly, uh, that fly by night or the arrow that flies by day. Do not dread the disease that stalk in the darkness or the disasters that stalk in midday. For a thousand shall fall at your side. Though 10,000 are dying all around you, these evil things will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see the wicked are punished. If you take refuge in the Lord, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up in their hands so you will not even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush the fierce lion and the serpent under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with long life. I will give them my salvation. Psalms 91 is so encouraging. And as we look at the blessing of mothers today, as we look at the nurturing nature of God, we see how mothers have been given to us to help us understand God's love and care for us. And even as we read these verses, we realize right now, we need God's tender love and care. As we have new fears, new things that are discouraging us, God's tender nurturing love is ever present. And I pray and I trust that you would be encouraged today not only to be grateful for your mothers, but also be grateful for God's nurturing care that reaches over us in all difficult times. Let me pray for you and we'll continue to worship. Father God, I just pray for your people today. May we experience your soft, love, caring, nurturing spirit, Lord. May we understand your love in a deeper way just as the love of a mother for a child. We love you, Father, and we give you worship today, knowing that you walk through us and protect us from all evil. Lord, we walk with you, we trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt singing the line, in the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes. What an incredible picture of our Savior, our Lord, running to us mercifully, arms open wide, wanting a relationship with us. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that you came running to each of us, to me, with mercy in your eyes, wanting to embrace, wanting to hold, wanting to love, wanting to save. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Mother's Day. Ladies, mothers, you are a blessing, and today we celebrate your call to motherhood as well as your femininity. Uh, We're going to look at one verse today, actually just a half of a verse. It's in Proverbs 31, and it says this, Proverbs 31, 28, Her children rise up and call her blessed. 
Her children rise up and call her blessed. And today, whatever your relationship is with your mother, I pray that you will be able to call her blessed and that your relationship with your mother will be strengthened. You know, God created your mother for a very special purpose, and uh, it's, it's a blessing to have a mother. She is the one uh, who, though God created you, uh, she is the one who first cradled you. And though God knew you before you were born, your mother felt you first in her womb. Though God gave you life, your mother gave you birth. And your, your mother, my mother, all mothers are very special. Mothers are a blessing. And as I celebrate, as you celebrate motherhood today, I want us to look at several blessings we find in having a mother. The first thing I think of in having the blessing of a mother is the blessing of mother's loving eyes. Most likely, your mother's eyes were the first to peer down upon you with deep, earnest love for you. While you don't remember the first moments of your birth, your mother clearly does as she counted every single toe, every single finger, and yes, they were all there precious you were in her eyes. Your mother watched you grow. She watched you toddle around the house, moving and removing objects that maybe you would trip into or items you would put in your mouth. Your mother's protective eye was watching over you. In your preschool years, your mother's watchful eye is the one that you called to watch me, mommy, watch me do this again and again. Mommy, did you see what I made? Mommy, look at me. Mommy, mommy. Again and again, like a video camera, your mother recorded everything, every moment she looked on with love and care. When I think of a Bible character with a watchful eye, I think of Miriam. Miriam sitting in the bulrushes in the river, keeping watch over her baby brother Moses. The Pharaoh put out an order in Exodus chapter 2 and 1, or 1 and 2. He put out the order to kill all the baby boys. And Miriam, Jochebed's mother, uh, Miriam, the, the, uh, and her mother, Jochebed, they put out a plan to protect baby Moses by putting him in a basket and placing him in the bulrushes. And Miriam sat from a distance and watched over her little brother. When I think of a watchful eye in the Bible, I think of a Joshabed. Joshabed, she witnessed the royal family of Judah being destroyed, and she quickly grabbed the royal child Joash, hiding him and his nurse to preserve the royal line. You can read about that in 2 Chronicles 22. I like the examples of both Miriam and, and, and Joshabed because these are stories of women who took a step to care for a child that was not their own. Miriam was Moses' sister. Joshabed was Josiah's aunt. And I bring up these examples because you do not have to have given birth, ladies, to have the mothering, caring nature. And so, ladies, we celebrate all of you, not just those who have given birth to children who who have the word mommy attached to your name, but all ladies. We celebrate your feminine nature, your desire to look on with loving and caring eyes. And we're grateful for, for those who have looked on with loving eyes. Moses grew up, grew up to be one of the greatest leaders of God's people. Joash became a young king who grew up to bring God's people back to him. A mother's loving eyes, looking on with care. Secondly, the blessing of the mother is a mother's listening ear. I'm sure you can remember the benefit of what it is like to have a mother's listening ear. Whether you experience problems in school or problems with your relationships, most likely it was your mother who listened to your your problems, who listened to your frustrations. You know, mothers have a way of listening even when we don't say anything. As one person put it, a mother understands what a child does not say. I'm glad for the mother's extra sense, as it were. She can listen and pick up on things that I'm not even saying. When I think of a mother in the Bible with a listening ear, I think of 
Mary, the mother of Jesus. We know out throughout the scriptures she says that she treasured things in her heart. Mary listened as the angel proclaimed and told her of her pregnancy. Mary listened as the shepherds came and told her of the angel's proclamation. She treasured those things in her heart. Mary listened as Simeon and Anna spoke of Jesus in the temple. She listened keenly as Simeon said that someday a sword will pierce through her heart. Mary listened with panic as Jesus explained to her why he had left them, why he was in his father's temple. Mary listened, but kind of didn't listen when she asked Jesus to turn the water into wine. Mary listened as Jesus called his disciples, healed the sick, and ministered to many. Mary listened as the religious leaders spoke negatively of her son. Mary listened to the cries shouting, Hosanna! And then the cries shouting, Crucify Him! Mary listened to her son's final words as he hung on the cross, dying for the sins of the world. And I'm sure the words, a sword shall pierce through your soul, rang through her mind. Mary listened. Mary is what a beautiful example of one who listened. What a blessing it is to have a mother with a listening ear. I may be a mama's boy, and I'm okay if I'm pegged as that, but I remember so many times coming home from youth activities or time away, sitting in the presence of my mom and just sharing all the details of what went on. And I'm so grateful for my mother's listening ear to just listen and just to soak up conversation. What a blessing it is if you've experienced the blessing of a mother's listening ear. The third blessing of a mother is a mother's encouraging voice. A mother's voice is heard while she sings a lullaby to put her infant to sleep. A mother's voice is heard while she says a prayer to comfort the child in the middle of the night when they have a bad dream. A mother's voice is heard when she bids farewell to the kindergartner heading off to their first day of school. A mother's voice is heard and sometimes ignored when she encourages you to finish your homework. A mother's voice is heard when advice is given for the first job, the choice in a college career. A mother's voice is heard. But the most important time a mother's voice is heard is when she teaches her children about God. Proverbs 22.6 says, To train up a child in the way he should go or she should go, for when they are old they will not depart from it. Proverbs 31.26 says that she opens her mouth with wisdom and she teaches with kindness and kindness is on her tongue. What a blessing it is to have a mother with a nurturing spirit to care for us and to teach us God's Word. And when I think of a, a mother in the Bible who encouraged and taught God's Word, I think of Eunice. Eunice is the mother of Timothy, an early church leader. Just listen to the Scripture verses that are spoken of Timothy and Eunice. The first one I highlight is in Acts 16, 1-3. These verses here, Eunice isn't even highlighted, but it says that Paul, Paul also came to Derbia and Lystra, and the disciples there was named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman. Her name's not even mentioned. Eunice, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by his brothers at Lystra and Iconium, and Paul wanted Timothy to accompany with him. And in 2 Timothy 1, verse 5, Timothy, it said to Timothy, Paul says to him, I am reminded of your sincere faith, the faith that first dwelt with you in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I'm sure it dwells in you as well. Or 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 15, But as for you... Speaking again to Timothy, continue in what you have learned firmly believing, knowing whom you have learned it from your childhood, and you have acquired and what you've learned from the sacred scriptures, which is able to make you wise for salvation through the faith of Christ. In these verses I read, we learn that Eunice married a Gentile man, but this did not stop her from faithfully encouraging her son Timothy. 
And what a predicament a, a wife or a mother finds themselves in to parent alone. It is difficult. But here from Eunice's example, you can see it is possible. She evidently did an excellent job in training and teaching Timothy in the ways of the Lord. Because when the Apostle Paul comes to town, Timothy, her son, is recognized as one to be a potential leader in the early church. And Paul even encourages Timothy again to go back to that foundation that was given to you by the encouraging words that your mother and your grandmother had laid in your life. What a blessing you have experienced if you've experienced the encouraging voice of a mother at an early age. Mother, your words lay the foundation in our lives. Think of the mother's prayers that were prayed on your behalf. Think of your mother's tears that were cried on your behalf. Think of every encouraging word Your mother spoke to you. What a blessing it is to have a mother who speaks encouraging words over you. I was 20 years old when I left home, and I remember the first year away from home, I received a letter from mom almost every week. And what a blessing it was to dive in and read those letters, hear the encouraging words from mom, hear those uh, stories of what was going on at home. It was encouraging to have that connection with mom, encouraging and speaking life over over me. The fourth thing that we need to see of the blessing of a mother is a welcoming smell. Think of a welcoming smell. They say that an infant develops its sense of smell before it is even born. That being true, the first thing you would smell would be that of your mother. Studies suggest that a baby can smell its mother up to two feet away after it's born. Think of the welcoming, the comforting smell of home, the comforting, welcoming smell of your mother. Can you remember the smell of mom's cooking? Or perhaps the smell of mom's perfume? Or or maybe you remember that your mom chose a special brand of cleaning supplies and, and you smell that smell and it instantly takes you back to home. The other day, my brother and I were talking about this idea, and it was interesting how we listed some of the same smells that we remembered from home. We used this cleaning supply, it's called Shackley, I'm not promoting it in any way, but we remember that smell was used at home, or a certain brand of degreaser was used, we smelt that, or we remembered our mother's perfume, we recognized it, we could both call out the, the certain brand, we remember what it was. And of course, we remembered well mom's really good cooking. Smells of home bring back beautiful memories. And I can't think of a Bible example necessarily that speaks of a mother's smell being brought from home. But I do think of the lady mentioned in Proverbs 31, where we get our text verse from today. This lady did everything she could to make her home a welcoming presence as she whipped up things in the kitchen or in her home, making it a place her family wanted to be. Just listen to some of the verses highlighted in Proverbs 31, entitled, The Woman Who Fears the Lord. She seeks wools and flax. She works with her hands. She brings food from afar. She rises... While she rises, yet late at night, she provides food for her household. She, can, she continually finds things, or she, she dresses herself with strength. She, she goes out like a merchant, providing things for her family. She opens her hand to the poor. She is not afraid of the snow in winter, but she, she cares because she has clothed her household in scarlet. She makes a bed and covers herself with fine linens and purple. She looks after the way of her household, and they eat because she does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. And and those verses go on in much more detail. I I know some women say that when they read Proverbs 31, they feel like it's a a description of Wonder Woman. And my response is, ladies, you are Wonder Woman, so, so keep up the hard work. The description found in Proverbs 31 is this lady who is desiring to make her home a welcoming presence. And we know if it's a welcoming presence, good smells are coming from the kitchen, coming from the house. 
Creating a welcoming atmosphere is going to look different for each lady, of course. But what a blessing it is to have a mother or to have ladies in your life who purpose to make, purpose to make the home a place where you want to stay. The fifth thing that I see of the blessing of a mother is a mother's tender touch. Mother held you in your arms before anyone else. She hugged you. When you scraped your knee, you reached for her. Mother's tender touch, always reassuring, always comforting. Mom communicating love, security, and friendship. A person put it this way, a mother holds their child's hand for a while, but holds their heart forever. When I think of a mother's tender touch in the Bible, I'm, I'm drawn to the story of Hannah, the mother of Samuel. Hannah longed to have a child. She cried out in the temple to have a child. When, she, when the Lord promised her a child, or when she was told she would have a child, she, she declared that she would dedicate this child to the Lord. And she did when she had the child. You can read about it in 1 Samuel 1. When Hannah conceived the child, she brought the child. She named him Samuel, brought him to the temple, and promised him to God. And every year, her and her husband would come back to the temple. And when she came back, she would bring him a new robe that he could wear. And I can just imagine Hannah and Samuel's tender touch, not seeing each other for a whole year. I can just imagine it being the highlight of their year. Samuel running to his mother, Hannah wrapping her arms around little Samuel. The tender touches he would remember for the whole next year. I have learned as I grow older that a visit with my mother is not complete without a hug. Now if you live close to mom, or you live uh, at home with mom, maybe you overlook the thought of having a hug regularly from mom. But I live a thousand miles away from my mom, so a hug is what I want when I get near my mom. That tender touch is always encouraging. Now, I, I bring up all these points about the blessing of a mother, not just to give you warm, tingly feelings about your mom. Although I hope and I pray that your relationship with your mom is strengthened through this sermon. I pray that it is. But there's a much, a much deeper point in this message about the blessing of a mother. And that is this. It is through the blessing of a mother that we experience the nurturing nature of God. It is through the blessing of a mother It is through the blessing of ladies we experience the nurturing nature of God. Yes, men, fathers, we nurture, but not to the extent as women or mothers nurture. For a female, for a mother, it is their first nature. It is their first response. It is their primary calling to nurture. God is most often described in the Bible in masculine terms. We often think of God as our Heavenly Father, our Abba Father, and this is good and correct. But let us not forget that God created both male and female in His image. And it is through the mother that we experience and we gain an understanding of the nurturing qualities of God. Listen to the way God speaks of His chosen children, the children of Israel. He uses terms of a mother to a child. In Isaiah 66, he talks about that he would nurse them or carry them on his hip or bounce them on his knee as a mother would comfort. I will comfort you, he says. Or Isaiah 49, 15, can a mother forget her nursing child? Yet I will not forget you. Think of the nurturing quality of Jesus as he looked over Jerusalem in Matthew 23, How often I would to gather you as children, as a hen gathers her brood of chicks under his wings, yet you are not willing. A nurturing nature, nurturing nature and care of God. With everything going on in our society today, we need that extra nurturing presence of God to experience that. Listen to these tender attributes describing of God's nurturing nature. 
God's loving eyes. Psalms 33, 13. The Lord looks down from heaven and he sees all the children of man. God looks. If God didn't love, he wouldn't be looking down upon. God's listening ear. 1 Peter 3, 12. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears, his ears are open to their prayers. Or God's encouraging voice in Psalms 42, 8. By day the Lord commands His steadfast love, and by night His song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Experiencing God's songs, experiencing God's love, encouragement from His Scripture over us by day or at night. Or think of God's welcoming smell. Ephesians uh, 5.2 says this, Walk in love as children... as." Sorry, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Just read through Leviticus and you will hear a phrase repeated again and again. As all the sacrifices are being described to be made by God's people, the sacrifice is made and then it is said, this is a pleasing aroma to the Lord. God cares about smells. A smell, our lives are considered as a pleasing aroma to our God. It's a nurturing, a nature of of enjoying a beautiful scent. We are to God, a fragrant offering. Or think of God's tender touch. Isaiah 41.3 says, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who says, fear not, for I am the one who helps you. God's tender touch, loving us, caring for us, holding our hand. Mothers, ladies, when you operate in your God-given feminine nature, you are a beautiful blessing to the children and others around you. We need to experience God's tender love through you. Thank you, ladies, for that. Ladies and mothers, you are a blessing You are a blessing to us because you help us experience, you help us understand God's loving eyes. You help us understand His listening ear and His encouraging voice. You help us understand His welcoming smell. You help us understand His tender touch. When you do those things, we understand God more. Don't try to become anything else, ladies, than what God has created you to be. You are such a blessing. You are so valuable to your children, and to the children of the church. The body of Christ needs your feminine qualities. I know you may get frustrated or you may get tired of nurturing. You may desire to quit and you do need a break. But please, moms, don't stop. Never stop nurturing. Never stop giving that unselfish love that God puts inside of you. Your tender quality shows us who God is in a beautiful way. And now for the rest of you who aren't mothers, I want to say this to you. Go tell your mom that she is a blessing. Go tell her. Make sure she knows that she is a blessing. Appreciate her in a new and a deeper way than you ever did before. And and learn and understand her nurturing gifts. Understand those qualities that are within her. Extend your grace and love if mom wants an extra hug. Or extend your grace and love to her if she's extra protective or extra cautious. It's her loving nature that is reaching out and caring for you. I encourage you, honor mom today, but not just today. Honor mom every day. Rise up and call her blessed. For your mother is blessed. She is a blessing to you. Let us pray. God, I just thank you for each and every one, each and every mother, Lord. Whether they feel defeated or discouraged in their mothering, I pray you would encourage them today. For us who walk alongside mothers, may we encourage them. May we celebrate their feminine nature. May we celebrate and encourage all ladies today. Father, you created them in your image, special for you, your unique purpose, Lord. And we praise you. We praise you and thank you for the mothers in our lives who reached out and lovingly helped us grow. Father, I pray for your people today. Lord, may you strengthen us, help us to walk deeper and closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray.
Amen.